Hey guys, back again. Now I'm doing a critique of Dr. Todd Grande's take on Myron May and gang stalking. I did this live yesterday, but due to the state of my electronics, uh, the sound just wasn't up to par, so I'm going to redo it. I think it's important that we address this man's videos and his propaganda and lies um, as he sits at the top of the algorithm and it can be quite damning if left unchallenged. So I'll go into that a bit more later, but let's have a look at this video. I must say the uh, the bum fluff on his face looks horrible. He, uh, he could hang his head out a car window and that would just blow off. The pink shirt's a nice touch too. Anyway, here we go. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Myron May? Just remember. Who asked that question? You might want to put the viewer's name in, but the, the viewer was the government. Reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating. Speculating again. About what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider. This man now has one million followers, I'm told. For supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. He needs more money. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Myron May was born in Dayton, Ohio, in 1983. His father served in the Navy and reportedly struggled with cocaine. He has a Navy background, a military background, very common with targets. He's just saying that his father struggles with cocaine. He's already trying to set up and uh, pigeonhole this man and sort of slander, setting up a, a, a history of uh, family drug use. Pain use. Myron lived with his mother growing up. At some point, his mother was no longer able to care for him. It appears as though he was in foster care for a while until moving to Florida to live with his maternal grandmother at the age of 12. Myron... He spoke very highly of his grandmother. And uh, from what we know, he was, a, he was quite a nice young man. But this, this guy is trying to set up a history of instability, which is textbook, you know, his textbook. Attended high school and was active in basketball and track. After graduating, he enrolled at Florida State University. He had a run-in with campus police in 2002. They thought he was using marijuana, but he was never charged. <laughs> they thought he was using marijuana, Ooh, but he wasn't. So what's the point of uh, putting that in there? Pathetic. I think we've all had a, a, a run-in with marijuana, doctor, a doctor. In 2005, Myron graduated with honors with a degree in economics. He attended Texas Tech University School of Law and graduated in 2009. So he's a bona fide professional, unlike this goose. This man is a qualified professional. You jelly much, uh, Todd? He received a license to practice law in both Texas and New Mexico. After this, he had a series of job changes. He found a job in Houston making about $160,000 a year, but he quit less than two years later. He found a job representing employers in labor disputes, he quit that job six months later. In June of 2012, he found a job at a smaller firm making less money. People quit jobs. People climb the ladder. People, you know, they move around. They don't like where they work. As, as you can hear, taking less money is, is a real no-no for this guy. This guy is all about money and, and material possessions, I'd say. He's also got a, a cactus fetish. If you look back here. That there is a quite absurd amount of uh, cacti-related items here. I, I think he actually hurts himself so that he can feel something. In May of 2013, he left that job, saying he was going to start a business in Denver, Colorado, but there is no indication he ever did that. Not long after this... So what's the point of that? That's just speculation. Myron was hired as a public defender in New Mexico, making about $50,000 a year. In January of 20... 
he probably made that 50000 in two or three months, right? 2014, he quit that job and was hired as a prosecutor in New Mexico. Sometime in 2013, Myron started dating a pediatrician named Danielle Nixon. In Mar probably the handler. March of 2014, Danielle noticed that Myron's behavior was changing. Here are a few examples of what she noticed over the next several months. He stopped going to church. He claimed to I hated church. Hated it. Would, would uh, do anything to get out of it. Have intense back pain. Yes, I had back pain. And for six months, medical professionals such as yourself would not help me for six months. But there was no apparent cause. Myron was becoming fidgety and had trouble sitting. He was always trying to move his back. He became convinced that he had ADHD and he had two panic attacks. No, he would have been convinced that he had ADHD by a health professional that would have tried to pump him full of drugs. As time progressed, Myron became paranoid as well. He slept wearing all of his clothes and with a knife because he did not trust his neighbors. When he was. Is it paranoid if, it, if there is a genuine fear for your life? Or is that just concern? Is that just staying alive? Driving, he thought he was being followed. When someone pulled out in front of him, that confirmed his suspicions. That's a lie. Someone pulling out did not trigger a, a, a thought in his head that the, his targeting had just kicked off. That, that is a lie. Like he believed that was a sign he was definitely being followed. Andy would not talk in his car because he believed it contained recording devices. Yes, the government and police have bugged many vehicles. Look, look as far back as the Stasi. Very common that they, they bug officials, vehicles. That's espionage. That's surveillance. Danielle ended her relationship with Myron after about 15 months. Myron went to a police station on September 7, 2014. He told them that he was hearing voices and being watched through a camera in his house. I, I have no doubt that he was hearing voices. I have heard voices. Most of us do. As for the cameras, I, I cannot confirm or, or, or deny that they are in people's houses. I, I have not found them in my house. Specifically, he said that he was climbing out of a bubble bath and heard voices say, did you see that? He never puts lotion on. Myron believed the people talking were evil conspirators, but it seems strange that they would be so concerned with his skincare regimen. Maybe that was the long-term plan of the conspirators. They were not going to try to harm Myron in some expedient manner, but rather facilitate a slow destruction through poor lotion management. Okay, that bothers me. This is this idiot's uh, attempt at a joke. But, but for someone that, that deals in such sensitive matters, to, to make such jokes is incredibly unprofessional. Would you want your case in, in his hands where, where he's potentially mocking and laughing at, at you and, and no doubt, you know, laughing it up with his cohorts and, and, and telling all your, uh, all your business? Very unprofessional like the head of their secret organization was an evil dermatologist or something. On September 25... What about an evil try-hard psychologist? Myron checked into a mental health treatment facility. Four days after this, he was released. On October 6, Myron resigned from the district attorney's office without offering any explanation. The next day, he confronted Danielle at her residence. He handed her a piece of his SUV, which he said was a camera that had been installed by the police. Okay, so what was the piece of the SUV? Or was it a camera? Sounds like it was a camera. Danielle called the police, but they were unable to locate Myron, which appears to disprove Myron's whole theory. Myron had traveled to Florida and stayed with a family friend. He returned to Florida State University, not as a student, but rather just as a guy who walked around campus. One day, he even sat in a class and had a bizarre conversation with other students. On November 14... <laughs> well, what's the bizarre conversation? Who are the students? 
But where is this information coming from? Cite your sources, doctor. Myron posted a message on a Facebook page for targeted individuals, which read, quote, Has anyone ever been encouraged by your handler to kill with the promise of freedom? A lot of people have, but that promise of freedom is an empty promise. Unquote. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On November 20, 2014, Myron went to the campus library just before 12.30 a.m. He was quite familiar with the library from his time in college. He walked into the front lobby and shot at five people with a semi-automatic pistol chambered in 380. Three people were struck. Myron never progressed past the front lobby. He exited the building and was confronted by the police, who ordered him to drop the gun. He said, why don't you shoot me already? It appears the police were asking themselves the same question. They proceeded to shoot him 24 times. Myron made it. So Myron wanted to yield. He, he clearly wanted to be stopped. It, it doesn't sound like he was going to shoot any further. And the police, being the, the, the thugs that they are, shot him 24 times. 24 times. If that's not overkill, then I don't know what is. And this is this gets to the crux of uh, why this goose has done another video, and it's uh, the, the current gun grab that you're seeing in the States. You had two shooters recently, and uh, he, he thought he'd knock over two birds with one stone. He, he was shown... He, he was shown up in his last video about us where people just bombarded his comments, but this was back when there was a, thumb de a thumbs down feature on the videos and he got slammed by targets, I can tell you this. So he's, uh, he's trying to save face and he's serving an agenda here. No doubt, I, I have no doubt this man is a government shill. These people that rise... Well, this guy's been at it for a while, but I, I still think he's very much a government shill. He's, he's paid for this. This is a hit piece. Not survive. He was 31 years old. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. This case involves something referred to as gang stalking, which is also referred to as being a targeted individual. As I mentioned, Myron was on a Facebook page for targeted individuals. He believed that's what was happening. Gang stalking is when a person believes that a group of three or more people have organized to stalk, harass, or threaten them. It is assumed that the vast majority of the time when someone reports that they are a targeted individual, the belief is inaccurate, meaning they have the subjective experience of being harassed by multiple people, but in reality, no such... It's inaccurate in his eyes. This man has not experienced it, so... He does not know. How, how can he just write it off? How, how can you just write off someone's experiences, especially when it's collectively shared amongst people from all around the globe? That, that's because he works to a set of guidelines where, where they dismiss such claims. It's in a book. He has to stick to that book. These people do not break the mould and, and, you know, go off the script. That's, that's because he, he serves a boss. He serves a higher power that is uh, big pharma. That, 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 that is drugs. He's a drug pusher. He's, he's nothing more than a drug peddler. He can't wait to get the script out and... Um, get you on something to, to calm you down, let's say. That's a win in their eyes, just to calm you down a bit. Much harassment is occurring. Individual stalking is quite different than gang stalking. Here are some key differences. This is pointless. He went through this before. This is pointless. Everyone knows what stalking is, and it is such a small element of gang stalking, of what gang stalking encompasses. Like, like, you're not going to say someone skimming your bank is stalking you, let's say. Right. Individual stalking is relatively common. Gang stalking is not. Individual stalking typically has a shorter duration. 
It features a wide variety of communication methods, including text messages, emails, and letters. As does gang stalking, the whole online element keeps the constant pressure on. It is very much an element in gang stalking. They, they want you under constant stress. These are not present in most of the gang stalking reports. Victims of what reports? How many reports have you read? I, I bet you you've read maybe one report, but you need to cite that. Individual stalking almost always know who the perpetrator is. Those reporting gang stalking typically cannot identify. No, we can identify. They are loved ones and usually, well, the people closest to us in our life. They are the neighbours, but we cannot go to any type of official who should be there to keep us safe because they are all told the narrative to use on us and, and we are shut down. We cannot go to anyone for help. The perpetrators, because the perpetrators don't exist, the vast majority... In your opinion, they don't exist. Look at those lips. Look at them. They don't exist in your opinion. D do stalkers exist? Why do gang stalkers not exist? You're saying it's three or more people. Now you're saying they don't exist. The majority of individual stalking reports are real. Almost all gang stalking reports involve delusions. Item number two. He's just defined it as stalking by more than three people. So, so he, he's saying that's not, that no one has ever been stalked by more than three people. Myron may believe that he was a targeted individual, but was that the case? Let's compare what we know from the research about gang stalking with Myron's experiences. 80% of targeted individuals believe that multiple agencies are involved in the conspiracy. They absolutely are, but where is this study? Have you guys ever done the study? Anyone here ever uh, partook in a, a study like this? Anyone ever been asked that question? See, Myron believed this was true, and he believed his co-workers and family members conspired against him. All of that is true. I, I can guarantee you that that is true. As well. 60% of targeted individuals believe their home is being monitored for audio or video. Myron believed that his house was... It is an absolute fact that you are monitored through your phone alone. So if, if this is the case, then yes. That, that, that is baseline surveillance right there inside your home. But there is there, there are other ways to surveil a home. Bugged, and a camera was installed in his vehicle. 90% of targeted individuals... He said earlier that, that he presented to his girlfriend an actual camera. He said it was a camera. Why are we dismissing that? It was something else. The guy's a lawyer. You don't think he knows what a camera looks like? Individuals believe that they are being followed. Myron believed he was being followed by cars on the road. He believed that he was being followed in Walmart, and his co-workers were peeking around corners looking at him while he was at work. Absolutely common. Does this... Uh, what, why is this so far... Um, out of the realm of, of possibility for this guy. 40% of targeted individuals believe that the government is controlling their mind. Myron had a few things to say about this. The government is absolutely controlling your mind through television alone, television, propaganda, all the crap that we're, they're pumping to our bodies. They, they are controlling us completely, not just the mind. Every aspect of our life is controlled by government. What? What? How can you... Dispute that comment. He claimed he was being hit by a directed energy weapon, which could control people's thoughts and cause pain, which sounds a lot like the descriptions given by people affected by. If he'd done his research, he'd looked at uh, Dr. James Giordano, uh, John Hall, Robert Duncan. If he looked up DARPA, any military patents, he, he would see that, that these type of weapons and mind control ha has been the hot topic since, let's say, mid-50s. It, it has been 
the main race for military technology and governments. That, that, that is a fact. It's all about mind control. The, 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 the battlefield is, is the mind. Havana syndrome. I have a separate video on that topic. I hate the term Havana syndrome, but if it gets it in the, if it, if it gets it into the public, so be it. But Havana syndrome, um, for me, sort of implies that it's a newish thing that's only just happened. So that they they coined the phrase right there, and you know, it, it only happened recently, which is bullshit. Myron thought that the weapons were physically cooking him in his chair. Yes, I. I I can show you evidence from myself and so many other targets that have been cooked. Horrific, some people horrifically cooked. You, th you think they harmed themselves? The conspirators were trying to convince him that he was guilty of a crime by harassing him electronically. His conversations with coworkers convinced him that they were trying to cheat him out of money in order to make him more vulnerable to harassment. We, we have money constantly skimmed from our banks. I, I can show you statements where there is constant money skimming, constant, triple charging, quadruple charging. It's endless. Noises from the homes of neighbours were part of a noise campaign designed to destroy him mentally. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have more than enough evidence on this phone. And see that? Conveniently, it's broken right on the button. I need to try and get the info back out of that phone. Wait, I was thinking maybe his neighbors were like Miley Cyrus or Hillary Duff, but I think Myron was talking more about a non-singing noise campaign. So his go-to for music artists is Miley Cyrus and Hillary Duff. You're a weird little man, Todd. 30% of targeted individuals believe the police are in on the conspiracy. Fact. Absolutely they are, or it doesn't run smoothly. That, that is a fact that police are involved. This is probably why he chose to have his final confrontation with the police. When considering the similarities between targets... That, that is speculation again. That, that, what, that's pointless. That is your... That there's no foundation to that claim. Targeted individuals in the research literature and Myron's experiences, it seems clear he was suffering from the gang stalking to lose. Another thing, if he had it in so bad for the police, why did he go and shoot up a library? If you're looking for the police, you're going to go to the fucking library? You're a goose. Have a look at that face. I'm going to blow that up. But uh, yeah, you, you've got you've you've got it in for the police, so you're going to go to the library. Okay. It's possible his psychosis was caused by schizophrenia. Now he has psychosis. This is you're you're diagnosing him without meeting him. This is uh, how quickly these people want to want to jam some drugs down your throat. Item number three. Why do some people who develop schizophrenia have delusions that appear to fit in distinct categories? We see Why are we at schizophrenia now? We, we've gone from delusion to paranoia to psychosis to schizophrenia? We see that all delusions tend to fall in a number of categories like grandiose, paranoid, erotomanic, persecutory, jealous, and somatic. Why aren't delusional beliefs more random? In the case of a targeted that's your field. Why, why do you not know this? The individual, their delusions seem to be a combination of... Again, with the delusions. This is this guy's default, the word delusions. This is why you don't argue with people like this. They, they, they have a mindset. It's made up. You're not going to win an argument with, with an idiot. Paranoid and persecutory. It's not exactly clear why delusions often fit the categories or why some people develop the gang stalking delusion in particular. One possibility is that because the paranoia comes first, an individual who is becoming delusional seeks out information related to covert surveillance, government agencies, and mind control. Just like when somebody has anxiety, they tend to find reasons to justify feeling anxious. 
like they tend to look for anxiety provoking stimuli. They don't look for it. There are actions that, that kick off that emotion. There are actions that trigger that response. Perhaps people who are paranoid start to look for information that justifies the paranoia. They believe in the paranoid delusions. Therefore, they have to. How would you know what to look for? Shape the world into a frightening place where being paranoid makes sense. This restores them to a position where they don't consider themselves mentally ill. All of these delusional categories are represented online. So if somebody who is paranoid finds posts about targeted individuals, the material is really going to resonate with them. The more research they do on it, the more convinced they become that they have found the answer. Like a vine growing on a wooden lattice, the delusions take the shape of the targeted individual narrative. Item number four. This is the last stand from a, a man that clearly knows that this is coming out, that, that this is a real desperate attempt here to bury things for a little bit longer, but um, people know. But people know through the government's actions through COVID and, and what, what they're trying to push on each on, on us, that they know that, uh, excuse me, <coughs> that they know that this is very much going on now. That this man also trying to make out that um, he, he's afraid of us and, and that we are, you know, somewhat dangerous puts us in an incredibly a dangerous situation. That this is incredibly irresponsible from this man to slam a group of people that, that he has not done the research on. It, it, it's, it's horrible. This is a horrible hit piece. It really is. Most people who believe they are targeted individuals never become violent. Why did Myron May turn to violence? I think the psychosis turned Myron's strengths against him. For example, Myron was confident, believed in law and order, intelligent, and brave. His confidence meant that he was going to believe the delusional thought processes. He would not have doubted that the voices were real. He believed in his ability to perceive accurately. The commitment to law and order. His life fell apart very quickly, as does all of ours when targeting goes overt. That This man was a practicing attorney. So he, he was a smart cookie, right? He, he succeeded in life. He was smart. You're going to say that now then he became just a, a, a basket case? No. I, I still have my faculties about me and I'm, I'm targeted. I, I, I'm probably more switched on now than I've ever been in my life. I'm not joking meant that he was someone who is more than capable and willing to fight back against something that he felt was wrong. He was going to take action against the conspiracy. He was going to try to fix the situation, not only for himself, but for everybody, all the people who were targeted individuals. His intelligence helped him to form a plan to fight the conspiracy, and his bravery permitted him to go through with a very... This is absolute crap. This is just... This is rubbish, what he's saying here. Dangerous act, one that was ultimately lethal for him. In this way, we see the cruelty of psychosis. It converted the positive features of Myron into a force of destruction. Item number five. Myron was treated by an individual therapist and in a mental health facility, yet no one realized how dangerous he was. So your people, th th this is on you. Your people did nothing to help this man because you fucking dismissed everything he said. That's why. You don't listen. You don't want to listen. You're, like I said, you have a book that you work from and, and you write everything off that you can and you pump people full of drugs. This is your, this is your area of expertise and you all let him down. There are a few possible reasons this happened. Schizophrenia does not develop all at once, if that is in fact. See, pushing the blame back onto it. How about you take some of the fucking blame yourself? That, that, it's unbelievable. This is, 
Narcissism 101. What Myron had. During the onset, Myron probably had good days and bad days, good weeks and bad weeks. He may have seen the... What about naming the psychiatrist and psychologist and team that worked with him? What about citing some of that, where he was treated at? Mental health professionals during times when he was less symptomatic. Myron was... Once again, I said it in the last video, but the term mental health professionals is such a, a joke, a, a real joke. That, that, that's a moniker that you've put on yourself. You, you, are, you, you are not professional. You, you are not even qualified to, to, to speak to people on any level, on any fundamental level. I would not go near one of these people. They are incredibly dangerous. They are trained in entrapment and... You don't want anything to do with him. He was intelligent and paranoid. He would have avoided revealing the nature of his fears to clinicians. They probably never realized he was psychotic. Why would he fear revealing this? Why? Because he's smart enough to know that uh, what, what these people are like. Or thought that the psychosis would not return. Most people who say bizarre things are not experiencing hallucinations or delusions, for example, they could be powerful. Most people, mo most, well, all mentally ill people, uh, uh, they do not seek help. They, they are not aware that they are mentally ill like they are, especially you called him schizophrenic before. You, you think he'd have that sort of awareness? Come on. Politicians instead. Item number six, even if Myron fully believed in the delusions, didn't he know right from wrong? Myron clearly knew the difference between right and wrong. For example, in his writings, he asked for forgiveness and wanted those he harmed to have a spirit of contentment and peace. Everyone has their limits. So I'd, I'd like to see you tormented and, and what your breaking point would be, Doctor. Certainly, Myron knew that there was another way to bring attention to the conspiracy other than hurting people. I would dare say that he tried all those avenues too. He went to the police. He went to health professionals. He would have done all he could. He was, he was on the websites. He would have been watching the videos. He made videos. Like, he, trust me, he did all he could. And, and there's a point where you exhaust all avenues and, and most people give up. I think Myron was probably frustrated and in a lot of pain. He was fighting an invisible enemy. He was desperate to expose the perceived... Not an invisible enemy, uh, a very evil, crafty enemy that, that hides in the shadows using plausible deniability and the system. Treachery. This was probably a case where he simply could not stand the suffering anymore. I don't doubt that. It is... It is a life that... Um, you could not handle, Doctor. Not many people could. In his last moments, he was not acting rationally. He felt as though he needed to bring everything to a stop, regardless of the method. Maybe he believed that simply holding a weapon would not persuade the police to fire on him. If they were watching him and could read his mind like he believed, it makes sense they wouldn't be deceived by him simply holding the gun. Myron may have felt like he needed to shoot somebody in order to convince the police that he meant business. Now moving to my final thought. He had nothing else to, uh, he was at his wit's end, you know. I, I don't, I certainly don't condone violence. I, I think when people act out in this way, like, yes, some people snap. I, I, I don't think that they are the person, I, I think that the, the, the program has taken them over at the time and that they are a weapon, that they are a, a tool of oppression, that they, they are a tool of the program, that they aren't themselves, and, and that's when they're lost, you know? And I don't think that we as targets should be so ready to claim shooters and, excuse me, people that do such crimes. We, we don't need the stigma. Yes, we need to support them, you know, keep them in our prayers, in our thoughts, write letters if they get incarcerated, but I, I don't think we should claim, it, it's not fair that, that we should claim 
um, th th these people's actions. That's not on us, you know. A and I, for one, will never. Um, I'll, I'll never welcome such actions, you know. That's in the rare instances opinion. when somebody with schizophrenia commits a terrible crime, it's easy to forget who they once were. My He's back at schizophrenia. Why is he chopping and changing? Have you, does he have schizophrenia? How many doctors are in this video? Aaron was a highly respected attorney. He was intelligent, had a great sense of humor. He was described as an upstanding citizen. Who Seemed like a great guy to me. Every photo I see, smiling. He's well-dressed. You know, he, uh, people like that, 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 that sort of ha have a decent life, don't just snap for no reason. They don't just snap. Wanted to help people. I don't think that Myron wanted to be a criminal. I don't think he wanted to hurt anybody. Myron's perceptions were affected by psychosis, such that he felt the need to fight back. Delusions made him defensive. A part of him knew he was wrong, but he did not know what else to do. He could not resist the delusional message. Myron's victim... I'd love to hear this guy's um, definition of delusion. He uses it that much that I don't even think it has meaning for him anymore. ...as well as Myron himself deserve compassion and understanding. Myron said that he did not want to die in... Absolutely, he deserves compassion and understanding a and making a video such as this like i said before is so damning to us y you're an absolute asshole like we, we we think you're so abhorrent for, for making these hit pieces and and going in on us it, it is this is horrible you're a horrible man you're an evil little man that this is so damaging to us but i'll get to that in a minute in vain he probably thought his actions would expose a vast conspiracy. In reality, they raised awareness about mental illness. So perhaps some good. I, I think they raised more awareness about targeted individuals than these people like to admit, you know. Once again, not the path any of us should take, but absolutely it raised real awareness. Came of this terrible situation. Those are my thoughts on the case of Myron May. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching. Now, th this is a hit piece, right? I, I don't think it's as bad as the other one, but he's thrown in uh, a lot more delusions than normal. But he's he certainly gone off after us. And the, the timing of it with a couple of shootings in the US and the gun grab that, you know, Biden and his crew, that they, they want your guns, that they, they don't want any resistance for their little new world order that they want to try and sneak in. We're aware of this. So the timing of this video is, you know, it's suspicious to say the least. But as negative as this is, this is something we can turn into a positive once again, and I urge you to get over to his channel on this video. I'll put a link to his video below, and you educate people. Once again, educate people in his chat. It's a shame that the thumbs down feature was removed because he got slaughtered last time. He really did. It, it, it was like, like on your video, it's going to be pro thumbs up, right, because it's your channel, but one in five, I reckon, thumbed him down. So it, it was it was good. So I urge you guys to get in there, educate people, say we absolutely exist. This absolutely goes on. This doctor is not researched. Like don't don't um don't, don't sort of slag him off and, and be abusive because I don't think that helps our argument. But just let people know that absolutely we exist and. We're going to keep telling our story, you know. I think this is a, a, a pretty feeble attempt at keeping something buried that is, is just waiting to burst through the surface, you know. I, I still think we're, we're getting somewhere, you know. I've been saying that for a long time now, but can't give up anyway. doesn't matter. All right, guys, there is my 
play-by-play of uh, this douchebag. I can't stand him. I've now had to make this video twice, so that's two times watching this too many. All right, guys, stay positive. Thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, bye. One last thing, if these psychiatrists and psychologists were doing such a great job, then why has mental illness been on a steady incline for the longest time? Technology is meant to simplify our lives, make it more convenient, less stressful, yet there are more reported cases of mental illness than ever. Why? Because it's not in their best interest to help. These people invent and slap labels on people, pump them full of drugs, and write off anyone that may expose them or that is too hard for society to deal with. It's the system that's sick, not the people. All right, guys.